And I'm going, we're in the same position as we were in game number three. VG Gaming have just thrown Prepare everything into battle. one bucket and they pray they can drench Newbie with it. I mean, we've seen a lot of teams running similar risky strategy, Cloud9 being one of those teams. You just pick for the first 10 minutes and you kind of gamble on that first 10 minutes. VG lost the gamble last game, but they're coming into this game four with the same mentality as game three. You still have two more games to win. Like, if yeah. you want to be a TI champion, you win two more games. It doesn't matter if it's a match point or not. So let's see if they can execute. This is time to prove the world that you can. Yes. So let's actually talk about what they can execute very early on. Now, I want to talk firstly about actually Newbie's weakness. They have three melee heroes. They have all cores are melee heroes, which means ROTK on the lane has to be concerned about the supports. But as far as directly, if he's one on one with a melee hero, he can go builds, which will allow him to basically dominate the lanes. Super as well can keep himself a distance. Has to be careful about the searing chains. But Doombringer as well as Brewmaster can't control him that well very early on. You've then got, on top of that, an Aetis Prophet. Can keep you at range and can harass you back with, with these Treants. And as far as AoE clearance abilities, you don't really get these from the cores either. A little bit comes out from the supports, but not really enough to get rid of the trees very early on. So as far as VG Gaming goes, all their lanes are actually quite powerful. And you're seeing the lanes come into play now. And you've got an off-lane Super Weaver with Fenrir as begins. well as FY, a roaming supporting support combo. Uh, FY with boots first so we can get in range for those Barra Strikes. They need first blood VG Gaming as well as high advantage. Their top lane is their last hero, and that's Sylar taking the safe lane, Nature's Prophet. He's going one-on-one -on -one with Zhao Wei. Now, I'm interested to see what Zhao Wei's first creep is going to be as well, apart from <laughs> Sylar attempting to kill, uh, deny off his train. Um, but to see what creep he's able to pull out of, out of that dire side jungle. Well, Are they already rotating over? They're looking for the first blood. New FY's found Zhao Wei, and I don't know if they're going to give this a combination because it's chilling. Mid lane, though. Mid, RT can Gets lifted. He's gonna get tossed back. He's really in trouble. Here comes the shackle. The first blood. He's dead. He's gonna go against our He's dead. That's first blood. It is. The Doombringer with a haste rune was just distracted both FY as well as Fenrir. They weren't in position to reveal out any kind of rotation, and there's no ward there. Well, there is. It's a little bit further up, however, from the dire side, waiting for the rotation to come up towards the top lane. First blood to the way of Newbie, and one step closer to being TI4 champions. Yeah, you're right. I mean, it is range versus melee from the side of Vichy Gaming, but the fact that is, it's really hard for these range heroes to really get kills. For example, Venomancer, sure, he can land a Gale and right-click for a long time to get a kill, but I don't think that's really going to happen in the mid lane. Similarly, in theory, Weaver is going to out-harass a Brewmaster, but anytime you come close, you're eating a clap to the face, and suddenly it's a Weaver that's running back. So I think Nubian may farm a little bit worse, but that's not enough for Vichy. Vichy needs to dominate, and uh, giving up the first blood is not exactly the way to do it. Sunsheng as well as Bananas trying to zone out Super. They have one Sentry Ward left over on Sunsheng. Now, they actually dropped a Sentry Ward looking for the Observer Ward or Sentry Ward of the Dire side that's blocking up the pull point. Funnily enough, it's actually in the trees in a really difficult position to actually scout out unless you start clearing away some of these trees, which they don't have abilities for. So they can come back at the two-minute mark and realize oh. the camp is still blocked. I thought Shansheng could have let out, let out a Shackle. Maybe that could have initiated into something, but... For now, Zhao Wei is going to pick himself up a Centaur. So now he's got a Stomp available to go up against Fenrir. And also, level 3. This is two minutes in and your offlane Doombringer has a level 3. I'm really, really surprised Doombringer even got this far. You know, he got picked up in the second pick phase. He wasn't even banned out. It was, yeah, really, really surprised they even let him have it. Yeah, I'm also surprised that Doombringer wasn't so hotly contested on the first three games. Normally, Doombringer is one of the, you know, the first heroes that you see both these teams pick up, but... So we're only going to see one deep performance. Sunshine's going to try and engage on bottom lane. Sentry was down super, and was shakuchi himself yep. away. Sunshine was looking for the shackle hold. If he was able to get that under the under the sentry ward, then shakuchi down, Telekis follow up, and we could have been looking at another death. Man, ROTK's got nothing in this middle lane. Hal's got the, with the two points, flame guard and the bottle spam. ROTK is trying to attack him directly. He's got one point poison sting. There's very little damage coming his way, and they're losing out in the CS battle. I mean, essentially right now, Vichy Gaming and, and Newbie, they're trading farm. And I think that when you're trading farm, it oh, all is... comes down to that first fight. This is really smart from Xiao Wei. Obviously, he's realizing FY is trying to get some extra farm. Maybe they can get a kill here. The problem, yeah, they're going to TP in. Attempted gank right now on Xiao Wei. The bar is right being held. Now, how will make it move, but a searing change! RTK goes down, and White's burning as well. It's the immolation. Xiao Wei, he's still not dead. The last attack from the engine apparition will get the kill. But how? He's staring down the barrel of another kill. The shock on Xyla. There's your slider fist. Double kill for how? Nubia are off to a fantastic start here in game number four. Sunstrike's moving tower. back and it's the TP's attack. coming back from ROTK, but the damage is done to the mid lane. That was a three for one trade. 
I mean, I, I said it all comes down to that first fight. I think that was the first fight. Yeah. What does VG Gaming do at this point? They don't fight nearly as well. They're working with a huge level disadvantage, so they can't push nearly as well as either. I mean, heck. Don't call it GG yet, but it's, uh, <laughs> it's it feels like it. It really feels like it. It's definitely wrong. VG Gaming are clutching a straw right now for what they need. They know they need levels on the SK, they know they need farm on him. So FY is actually soaking up the experience on the top lane, while Syla is running back here at the moment. FY doesn't want to push oh, no, out the lane. RTK. It's again in the middle lane. The Gal is going to fly out over on Howard as well as Yahweh. He's still got the, the Blade Wars there, which is this kind of where I saw the problem coming in. Like, Okay, you're able to get in nice and close up at him. Yeah, you can gank him up, but you can't get rid of these high-level Plague Wards. And this is when you start to get zoned out a little bit more. And we've still got Weaver on the bottom lane. How has he only got 8 for 1 on the CS? Up against a 22 for 13 Brewmaster. Mu is slapping super silly. Radiance yeah, it's also much thanks to the, the supports. You know, really zoning super out earlier, because when a Shadow Shaman runs at your Weaver, your Weaver just have to run back. You can't really trade hits. And obviously, Mu, look at him. He's actually walking into the lane and threatening to clap. And, you know, Super is getting zoned out as a range hero, but I think we need to look at top because Newbie smoked up and they're looking for a kill. Yep, and maybe they can find one. They still got to look for FY. FY is now doing a quad stack inside of his own jungle. This is going to be a lot of experience he can get out, but of course, losing heroes like Siler on the top lane, Mr. Level 5 Prophet, he walked down and made himself visible. Death straight away. Telekinesis, wonderful timing, follow up shackles, and Xiaowen even sets up the Scorch to her. So I'll make one last army of Treants. But he goes down again on the lane. And they're going to try and power, power level FY. They need to get the Blink Dagger over yes. FY and find initiation from this SK. This is the only way they can really fight this. Don't and count. Su Super stop battling up against uh, Mu underneath the Sentry Ward. Don't, He's dropping so low. Don't count VG Game out just yet. I mean, we've seen terrible, terrible starts against VG Gaming. Remember that Cloud9 game where Bone7 got a solo kill against a tri lane and was able to steal multiple stacks? It was <laughs> FY that got a Blink Dagger before Bone7 and just really took the game back in control. So. FY, in, in, in FY we believe, and let's see how early that blink comes on. Let's see what type of ganks he could really initiate for his team. Oh, it'll take a little bit longer for him. Unfortunately, he also managed to find some mud golems, but continues to stack up at 1,300 gold right now. Fenrir also wants to soak up a little bit of this experience if he possibly can. Find his level 6, so then Ice Blast comes into play. Al's going to get lucky enough to pick up a double damage rune on the top river. So there's bonus damage for what is already a Radiant's level 8 Ember Spirit. Is under attack. And they're not really sacrificing levels on the other heroes of Nubi. You've got four levels over on Sunshine, so Mass Urban Wards will be available in a timely manner. And Rubik also up at level four, so we'll be looking for his level six. And then looking to steal Shikuchi, then great initiation. And probably the greatest thing you can steal is actually up against ROTK. You start taking away these Plague Wards from him at the high levels, you're going to be forcing VG Gaming into a bad position on the map. To a point where Rubik can actually force out his own towers if he wants to. And all oh, Courier kill. Yep. The Diakuri getting sniped. That got sniped right next to FY as well. Anything that could go wrong. Hang on. How the hell? I think that neutral keep sniped. It. Yeah, I think that I think so too. It got aggroed by FY and brought down because there's no hero that's anywhere near that. The neutrals have actually turned against VG Gaming. The RNGG is real right now. It's a good thing for VG Gaming that nothing was on that courier. Unfortunately for them though, it's, oh, actually there was there was observers and sentries on that courier. I mean, not not only going back to the Rubik and the spells if you steal, I think Sanking is another big steal. Like, getting a Burrow Strike, an instantaneous stun. I mean, I don't know right now. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. They'll have to give it a little bit more time. And VG Gaming at least having one thing go their way, they're slowing up the game. And I'm not going to say that's going to be a great thing, actually, <laughs> after I think about it, because you've still got a 4,000 net worth Hal, who's just free farming up that middle lane. Sure, he's being pressured up by ROTK, who's just really trying to finish up this tier one tower. Like, before anything bigger comes online from Nubi, but you've got a, a 3,000 net worth Zhao Wait, who's farming up the jungle at level VG 7. Gaming is fine manning eight minutes into the game. It's, it's yep. only four mid, but keep in mind that Prophet could TP in. I really need this tier one. They're committing essentially everything they got to this tier one. Oh, Siri chains over on Super. Silas gonna come in. How's on the front lines, but they can't control him. So VG Gaming bring all five in, as you said. Moo's still chilling on that bottom lane. He doesn't want to come yet. He's still farming up to his Blink Dagger. Vichy has to back. They're not getting this T1. Yep. Not this even is, close. This is a lot of wasted time for them. A lot of wasted time. And ROTK also returning towards that middle lane. He's the man charged with building into the mech. Having the Ring of Aquila early on. Dyer's That's to help force out this mid lane. But one attack. thing he is doing is stopping Sunshine 
as well as Banana from just rotating around and getting kills on the offlane. So even though we say, okay, five euros from VG Gang were brought in towards the middle lane, it's a lot of wasted time, their attention is being dragged away. Moose forcing out the bottom lane, but Super comes back down to this one. The Silas getting more space up on the top lane, and he's going past the Myers and just rushing the Orchid. The thing is, I don't think the supports from Newbie needs to go for the ganks. Look at their levels. They're both hitting level 6 very, very soon because they're stacking well, because they've been pulling well. They are going to get to level 6 regardless, and really, that's all they really need. <laughs> well, double stack being farmed up by FY, so... That's still not going to be enough for his Blink Dagger. He's going to fall just a little bit short after farming up that camp. And Doombringer's almost got his own Blink Dagger. If he can blink himself in on that Weaver, who is nowhere near a Lincoln Sphere or BKB or anything along these lines, Lincoln's, of course, being the ultimate item he wants to get up against Doombringer. He needs, he needs more money, he needs more time. And uh, ROTK, well, maybe she's going to give him money. Middle lane, Ashley, how? And then she intelligence holds ROTK in place. He's down again. Nine minutes in and a half. And Nubik pick up another kill. This one comes out from with the help of Rubik. Yeah, all TK felt he was safe because he had a haste room bottle, but it was a perfect chain stun coming out from Nubi and never got even a chance to use that. Finally, the bling dagger comes out, but you look at the lanes and where he could actually gank. Mid lane, if Hao has a uh, remnant down, he could zip away. Yep. Top, Doom is insanely tanky. Bottom, Brewmaster has split. So where do you actually get that gank off? It's it's gonna be it's gonna be on the Doombringer and you commit the going for a kill on the bottom lane. Super is going in. Is, is there gonna be a TP? They don't he's have sentries. Really, okay. They don't have sentries, and he's still got time lapse available. He's gonna try and force it on Sunshine. Didn't get the Shikuchi damage, and then just time lapse himself back into the tree line, and he just runs himself away from Moo in the meantime. And FY, maybe another thing we should take into account is the fact that VG Gaming are still on the dire Dyer's side. Bottom tower now we will deny the bottom denied. tower, which means they're losing a little bit more control, but. Roshan is still an option when you get mass plague wards. You kind of want to, though, want to have your mech before this all begins, and, and very, very good warning. And that tier one tower gone from Newbie uh, in the middle lane. I mean, last time we saw how, what Vichy Gaming did when they went for the Roshan play is they got out team fight. So, Smoke, RTK's up too far, but this time the Searing Chains doesn't latch from hell. The RNG works for them. Nah, for once. He bounced onto the right crew, so when he went to the left, the Searing Chains go. Now Super, he's gonna set the Crook Swarm over through the side, and she's looking for a couple of extra heroes. The Doom, though, is over an RTK. There's no ultimate coming up from him, and Silas, he's just standing in the river. Moose able to just blink himself in, go for the clap, split still the battle, but he got the Ember Spirit on the way in. He's just out of range of Sila as he's trying to run. Oh, the Sprout is up, he can't TP, two seconds on cooldown, fire oh. strike, Epicenter coming in from FY! But it's still the need to drop it down, there's too much tankability. The Shadow Shaman's on the side, Line, FY on the run, he can't do anything. The Brewmaster split went, which means they're able to follow up with the extra stunts, and now it's 9 to 2 on the board. The mid tier 1 tower did still go down, but that is the only upside for VG Gaming as Newbie take again another fight in their favor, pushing the advantage up to almost 5,000 experience and breaching close to 4,000 gold. Yeah, the experience is really the key. They need Finra. If Finra had an ice blast on top of that epicenter, they win that fight big time. Finra, unfortunately, not level 6 just yet. I'd like to see Vichy Gaming dedicate a little bit more to him, and hopefully they can take a better team fight. But it looks like Vichy Gaming again, balls to the wall. Let's just go for another push. I mean, they, they, what they have going for them is that Moose Ultimate is down, but I don't think they even need the Brewmaster split. I don't think this push Dyer's will work. Middle tower Agreed. Is under attack. Agreed. There's just too much damage still coming out. Uh, I suppose while Doom is down, that's nice, but the blink in, and there's your crack. Already an RTK with a fade ball. They got him down. He couldn't even knock the off. Same with Silo. They never attacked. All three are gone. I think maybe one attack was thrown out from the Ancient Apparition. VG Gaming just cannot respond to the to the damage that's come so quickly from Newbie. VG Gaming is banging their heads against the wall, and that wall is made out of titanium steel. Does that even make sense? No, that doesn't. Titanium. Dyer's top tower and, uh, is yeah, under attack. Their, their, their head is cracking. Just, I, I think they just need to play a long game. It's hard to play a long Dyer's game against a team that can fight so well, but they just don't have Dyer's any other option. You can't push attack. against Newbie. No. You can't, and you can't split push against them either because they just move themselves out, TP into the towers, which they've still got up on the side lanes, and then blink Dyer's and shit on you. But they're going to give it a shot again. Sila coming down wall. towards the bottom lane. Super is down here at least, so he'll be able to be in the He's fights. already ready. He's already yep. in the bottom lane. He's got a blink dagger. He's initiating with blink doom. This time doom is up. 
The Brewmaster Radiant split isn't there, but as we established before, all you oh, need to no. is a clap. And oh, there's your jumping no. super doomed up. ROTK, he's got the armor this time around, which he can use. Proper Sprout keeping Xiao Wei out, but look at Banana. He's shakujing himself up, almost killing off super, throwing back Xyla. FY comes in, but he's not stunned up. Virus throwing over on two. No weapons in a five seconds on cooldown. RTK, he gets his ulti off. The shock will fly. The sentry was revealing FY. Four years on the sideline. This is massacre. out of control. It is a massacre. Vici's got to try something different. It can't be the same thing. Man, VG in game number one, it looked so good for them. They came out, they had confidence, they had Panaz, and now they come in and they're 16 2 staring down the barrel of a loss in game number four, which is. It, it's painful. That's all this really is right now. VG Gaming, they just can't fight back. I want to talk Dyer's about like Roshana Badge before, but attack. now I don't even think if they had it, like, even if there were three heroes dead for Newbie, they still couldn't go for Roshan. Because Nubia are getting so big on all their heroes. Zhao Wei, he's got Blink Dagger, but he just, well, he's almost, yeah, he has. He's finished up the mech. So the full mech is up 14 minutes in for your Doombringer. RTK is probably about to die again, because he just gave over Plague Wards. So Banana is now on a force up late, and Moon jumps in. Gets a drunk brawl straight away. Epic has been prepped up by F1. He's already lost his teammate. The ice blast. Ice blast. The ice blast. The ice blast can do some work. Sunshine will do down from this one. But the Brewmaster split's already gone, and FY, he's out of mana, and he's locked down the river. Super was coming in to try and help out, but with the mass open wards in range of the tier 1 tower, the plague wars being prepped up. Super, he's trying to actually hunt banana being picked up, throwing down. He's got a time lapse. Time lapse, time lapse! Yes. He gets it off. Shikuchi out, but the sentry ward's still there. They can see him. He has to use his one charge. He's so low on life. No, Shikuchi, he goes down as well. There's two plague wards. And GG! 15 minutes in. It's over. Nubi convincingly moving their way through the winning bracket. And they will take the victory against VG Gaming here. Here at TI4. They look shaky in game number one, but they prove why they are the champions of the international. 3-1 the victory. Over $5 million. Won by Xiao Wei to the crew. Sun Sheng, how?